Falling in love with someone is an amazing experience. That feeling you feel when you realize that you don't want to spend another moment apart, it's unforgettable. And when it's the first time you've fallen in love, there's nothing better. But what happens when those life-altering feelings you had as you were falling in love begin to disintegrate around you? Reality sets in and what's left of the partner you once loved is an abusive, violent, controlling, leeching monster. This is the story of the freeloading husband who killed his wife and got away with it. Brianna Nugent was raised in Hayden, Alabama. Because of her bright smile and cheerful personality, she made friends quickly and had a lot of them. She didn't have any boyfriends growing up, but she didn't focus on that. She had a goal that she wanted to reach to become a registered nurse. Everything was going well for Brianna. She graduated high school and enrolled in the nursing program at Wallace Community College. It was about that time she met Stephen Nix. She didn't know it yet, but her life was about to be turned upside down. People described Stephen as someone who liked to play games and drink more than holding a steady job and acting responsibly. He was working as a janitor at Coleman Regional Medical Center, but something about him attracted Brianna, and the two started dating. Brianna never had a boyfriend her her whole life. She never had anybody that, you know, she was serious with. I mean, she would kind of talk to different guys, but never got serious with anybody. So I think she just fell in love with Steven because he was the first one to really you know, pay her a lot of attention and want to get serious with her. So I think that that had a lot to do with her being with him. Um, and I don't think she really knew him, like who he really was at that time. In the beginning, Brianna was happy with Stephen. They spent all their time together, and Brianna even moved in with him and his parents. That's when a bombshell discovery rocked her world. Stephen admitted to Brianna that he was cheating on her with someone he worked with, Stacy Robertson. Can you believe that? The person who Brianna most trusted in the world, and the person she was planning the rest of her life with, was having an affair with another woman. Can you imagine her shock when she found out? Brianna was heartbroken and angry and left the relationship completely. It looked like Brianna had moved on. She focused on school and earned her RN. But over the course of a year, Stephen begged Brianna to give him another chance. He told her he'd never cheat again, that he loved her and nobody else. She was too much in love to see him for who he really was. So finally, Stephen convinced Brianna to give him another shot. The two got back together and just a few months later, they were married. They moved into a modest house that Stephen had purchased while they were broken up and began to remodel it together. Brianna didn't know this was the beginning of the end for her. In the beginning of their marriage, things were working out just fine. They both worked and brought in an income to their family. Brianna was working as a nurse and Stephen was a janitor. But things began to change when Stephen suddenly lost his job. Then another and another. He couldn't keep a job and each time he lost another one, he tried less and less to find a new one. He seemed to be sliding back into his old ways of playing video games and drinking beer. He'd stay up into the early hours 
then would sleep in late. Then there began to be money problems. Brianna made good money as a nurse, more than enough for both of them. But it wasn't enough for Stephen. He became controlling of their finances and wouldn't let Brianna spend money on things she wanted or needed. He could spend it on anything he wanted. Eventually, after he'd racked up over $50,000 in debt, Stephen convinced Brianna that they needed to declare bankruptcy. She didn't want to, but that's the thing about abusive and controlling partners. They don't take no for an answer. So in June of 2019, they filed for bankruptcy protection. When it was all said and done, it dissolved all the debts he racked up. Everything that Stephen was putting her through made Brianna extremely unhappy. As a nurse, she knew that she needed professional help, so she went to her doctor and was prescribed Adderall for her anxiety, as well as a prescription for insomnia. That's when she discovered a secret about Stephen that he'd managed to keep secret for years. He had a prescription drug habit. She now had to worry about hiding her pills and keeping them with her at all times in order to keep Stephen from stealing them. Just a couple of months after their bankruptcy, Brianna was offered a life insurance policy through her work that had a benefit of twice her annual salary. It didn't cost very much, so she talked to Stephen about it. He encouraged her to buy the insurance. She didn't know when she did that, she was marking herself for death. By February of 2020, Brianna had finally had enough. Stephen still wasn't working. He was controlling of everything in her life and he was getting worse and worse with his drug problem. She also suspected that he was cheating on her and had been their entire marriage. So, Brianna started to plan how she was going to get out of her abusive and disastrous marriage. She was too embarrassed to tell her family, but she confided in friends that she was planning to get a divorce. It appeared that she finally had worked up the courage that so many abused spouses never achieve. She was going to do it, leave Stephen, and finally be happy. Sadly, it was never to be. On March 2nd of 2020, Stephen Nix called 911 and told the dispatcher that he just found his wife in the bathroom and that she wasn't breathing. EMS was sent to their house and found Brianna in the bathroom. But here's the thing. When they arrived, Stephen's uncle, who was a deputy sheriff, was already there. And it turns out that he had been on duty that day working at a dam that was 30 minutes away. So when Stephen told EMS that he had, quote, just found his wife, he was lying. A few minutes after he called 911, Stephen called Brianna's mom and told her that her daughter had just killed herself. Then he called Brianna's sister and told her, quote, your sister's done tried to kill herself. You better get over here. Brittany raced to the scene and watched as EMTs tried to revive her sister. She noticed that Stephen didn't seem too concerned about Brianna, but there was something in the bathroom garbage that he didn't want anyone to see. Reaching over emergency responders, he took the garbage bag out of the bathroom. And here's the weird part. He took it to his truck. When police asked permission to search his truck, he wouldn't give it to them. They had to go get a search warrant. And by the time they got back, who knows what happened to whatever was in the garbage bag. Another weird thing that happened was that police wanted Stephen to give them the code 
to unlock Brianna's phone. He refused. Brittany, however, knew the code and gave it to them. When police opened the phone, they saw a halfway played Facebook video. That's when Brittany began to be suspicious. The following day, after Brianna's body had been taken by the coroner, Brittany and her mom went over to Stephen and Brianna's house to get underwear and clothing for Brianna's body to be dressed in for burial. They searched through all of Brianna's dresser drawers and her closet. Brittany made a mental note that nothing was out of the ordinary, except that she couldn't find a single pair of nice underwear in her sister's drawer. And this, guys, is something that really bothers me. Stephen was so controlling of her money that she couldn't even buy nice underwear. The next day, Stephen called Brittany and said she needed to come over to the house. He had something to show her. When she got there, Stephen took her inside and showed her two empty bottles of fentanyl and a few needles that he said he found while going through her things. He told her that Brianna had a secret drug addiction and that she had overdosed. Of course, Brittany knew that she would have found them the previous day if they had been there. She and her mom had been thorough. Then Stephen went over to Brianna's underwear drawer, opened it up, and pretended to discover even more evidence. That's when it struck Brittany. Her brother-in-law had killed her sister. She had looked through that very drawer the day before. Nothing was in there but old, worn-out underwear. Stephen was lying again. As Brittany went to leave, she told Stephen's parents, who were there the whole time, that she was going to the funeral home to do Brianna's hair and makeup. They begged her not to go, telling her that she didn't want to see her sister that way. But she went anyway, and when she arrived, she was not prepared for what she saw next. When Brittany walked back into the room where the funeral home had her sister, she saw dark, fresh bruises all over Brianna's body. I mean everywhere. It looked like she had been beaten with a stick or a baseball bat or something. And on her hands, there were defensive wounds. Brianna had been in a big fight with someone and she had lost. Also, all over Brianna's body, there were puncture wounds from a large needle. Over 80 of them, all fresh. There weren't any old track marks. Things were coming into focus for Brittany. Before the funeral director could stop her, she took out her phone and took photos of everything. She wanted documentation of Brianna's body and she got it. She believed in her heart of hearts that her brother-in-law had killed her sister and she wanted justice. But that's, I'm sorry to say, pretty much where the story ends. Stephen was never charged with the murder of Brianna Nugent Nix. He still lives in the house he shared with her, only now he shares it with the woman he cheated on Brianna with. As soon as he possibly could, he claimed the insurance money and now spends his days almost entirely inside. I think the reason Stephen hasn't been charged in his wife's murder is because he's well connected in their little town. In fact, the day of Brianna's funeral, he told an off-duty police officer from another town that, quote, he knows a lot of people high up in Blunt County and that he could get away with anything he wants. Brittany is on a crusade to bring justice for her sister. She has worked tirelessly to make Blunt County do the right thing. 
In fact, she went as far as to see if the fentanyl vials that Stephen claims to have found are the same kind they use at the hospital where Brianna worked. They didn't match. But the hospital where Stephen worked as a janitor and where his now live-in girlfriend worked and witnesses say continues to work there. Yeah, that's the kind they use. So please help Brittany by signing the petition at change.org and making a donation on her GoFundMe campaign. Links are in the description. With your help, we can pressure Blunt County District Attorney Pamela Casey to do the right thing. Indict Stephen Nix. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.